I told y'all the collab was coming and here it is. Me and that boy, I'm Kevin. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. All right, so boom. Last episode ended off crazy. The Viltrumites pulled up, ran the fate with Omni-Man and Mark, and they spun the block just to get to Asby, but that's when Steve Harvey decided to cheat. That man got pinned up like a decoration in the first fight, then came back with his guts in hand giving Omni-Man scoliosis. That's when General Creed came through, bullied Mark for a bit and told him he now has to do Omni-Man's job. See now, I took that as an urgent command, but next thing we know, he's over here in a skirt playing Minecraft. I don't know what compelled him to wear this fit. His dad put that shit on. But at this point, it's been a couple of months since the evasion and he's helping rebuild. Turns out though, they built him a ship to go back home and was asked to bring his little brother with him. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm a fan of Debbie. Let's say my wife did everything the Omni-Man did right. And one day her baby was in my crib and now I gotta take care of him? Nigga, I done sat here and said, fuck your mama, and you heard about 50 cent. Nigga, fuck your baby. So now we see Donald confronting Cecil about the whole robot thing. That's when we find out the only thing left of Donald when the house exploded was his brain, which then was transferred into this robot. Yo, I didn't expect to be this locked in with the Donald storyline, but this shit kinda cool. So then Mark went back to his dorm, settled up to his homie, had a little run in with Cecil, and long story short, he said, did you forget how shit is run over here? You gotta check in with me. And when Mark balled up his fist, I don't know if Cecil was shook or just suffering from secondhand embarrassment. Cause on one hand he is a Viltrumite, an offspring of Omni-Man, but on the other he's still Mark, the nigga who got his ass beat the most in his own show. Shit, he was able to dodge Omni-Man. Actually yeah, that was definitely a is this nigga serious face. Then it cuts to the Guardians and homeboy right here finally gave us his backstory. Pretty much ever since he was a kid he hated living underground, and one day he decided to hold his man, knocked him out, stole his identity, and now he's the host body of however many things they are, whose sole purpose is to cause nothing but violence and now they're pulling up to earth but with that being said rex actually had a plan so we see that rex went to visit eve and long story short she's sad about what happened with her helping people last episode and stuff like that and rex gives her a pep talk and it's like a really good pep talk to be honest like if i was eve right there i might have folded but hey eve better than me i'm not gonna lie and she peeps that rex clearly wants something from her and he wants her to help them fight the aliens from mars cecil pulls up on mark and lets him know he gotta help fight too so we got two new members on the team the strongest members if i'm being honest so yeah yeah, we should win that easily. Meanwhile, on Earth, the Lizard League is attacking while some of the strongest heroes are away. So yeah, we might lose that one easily. But let's be honest, they called the Lizard League. Like, how tough can they be? Their leader is Mark Zuckerberg. Like, even Eve was talking about how these niggas sorry as hell. Oh, we're definitely better than Fight Force. Those guys are the worst. They got their asses kicked by the Lizard League last year. So Cecil lets them know what's up and they pull up on the Lizard League. Just the three of them against like five of the Lizard League. They might be cooked. But meanwhile, Mark and the gang get their shit blown up. Cause why wouldn't they honestly speaking? They board the alien ship, meet the captured Martians, but not before Black Invincible dumbass over here hits one of the aliens, pretty much alarming all of them cause they share a hive mind. And basically we got two fights going on, the space fight and the earth fight. So we gonna talk about the space fight first. cause honestly it's the more boring of the two who would have thought the fight with invincible adam eve and all these other actual heroes would be the boring one so basically how the fight goes is they try their best to fight back the swarm of aliens can't really fight back a swarm of aliens they're like a million aliens on this shit bro you're not beating them so rudy sends off like a pulsar supersonic wave that disables them for a few and he's like oh shit okay i can do this so y'all need to give me five minutes so that I could charge up so that we could pretty much beat these niggas. So Adam Eve is holding the barrier, but she can't hold that joint up for five minutes. Barrier fails, cut to black. Like I said, this is the boring one. So we get the better fight now. Everybody doing their own thing, you know. Rex versus Green Gecko or something. I don't know their name. Ray versus Karma Chameleon. And Kate versus Big Nigga. This is just Big Nigga. No reptile pun. And they all doing their thing. Whatever that is. Like Ray tries to jump on this nigga back while small for some reason and gets swatted away. Like what was the plan here? Why ain't you turn 
turn back big to like crush this nigga with your ass or something. She is garbage, bro. But if we really talking about garbage heroes, look no further than duplicate. Her ass is getting cooked it's over here, bro. Ripped apart, slapped, slammed, leg broken, punched through the face. She's washed. What can I say? The other four, I guess I can get. But punched through the face? I don't even know if I can show this. But how are you this trash? If I saw my clone get punched through the face, my ass might go home at that point because I'm cooked. So she jumps this nigga by herself but gets caught and thrown around while restraining him. Like I said, trash. Duplicate more like dupla late as fuck to use her powers in a useful way. Like, damn. Let me have clones. I'm running at niggas like Naruto. She running at this nigga like Boruto. And Rex over here joking about whoever dies first pays for pizza. Like, bro, she is getting worked over there. Now is not the time. Like, big nigga just threw her so hard that she snapped in half from hitting a wall. How do you snap in half from hitting a wall? So big nigga gets to the real cake. Got her choking. She can't duplicate out of there. Gang goes to try to help, but it's too late. Kate got taken out like it was nothing. I guess she got to pay for the pizza. So how are they handling that? Is it like they take her bank info or like she got her wallet on her corpse tail? No? Too soon? All right, my fault. So Rex obviously kind of down. Bro got slashed in the stomach. And then they start jumping, my guy. So Ray handles her fight real quick and simple. Or should I say simple and clean? So Big Nigga catches Ray, decides to eat her, but he forgot she can grow back bigger. This is literally what everybody was saying Ant-Man should have done to Thanos. And we see in the in Invincible. This is how you know this show peak. But right as I say that, this nigga throw crazy. He had to put it on her and literally like strengthens his throat and kills her like dead and talks about yum my boy rex is flabbergasted and so am i so it's a 2v1 right now my boy rex is already hurting green girl jumping at my nigga he dodging weaving throwing shits out one two three fourth one catches her my boy hit her with the destructo disc like he krillin but then big nigga pulls up and you know my nigga rex bro he is out here performing on these niggas dog he weaving these niggas hits going for the jugular straight deck this nigga dog he pulls out one more little mini bomb but this hungry hungry hippo ass nigga bites my nigga's head off i'm sitting here like no bro no but that nigga's head blows up and rex is the winner that nigga just so loaded he's the ghost but right as i'm celebrating this hoe ass nigga comes up behind rex gun to his head told him to name five ddg songs and the episode ends there hopefully he knows that ddg only got one song but he made a slowed version a sped up version a version with reverb and the instrumental version he gonna be i i already know it oh and alan is back and built like a jojo character in part one and optimus prime over here says he's a viltramite and he need invincible's help and that's a wrap on episode five no break leaving right off with rex barely winning against the lizard league gun to the back of his head named five ddg songs bro couldn't do it i watched this i was shocked Bro, I sat there on my bed. I paused. I had to get up. I had to go for a walk, nigga. There was no way this just happened. I saw bro get his brain blown out. And I thought this was gonna be a Marvel movie moment. You know, like when Captain America summoned Thor's hammer and saved Thor from literally dying. I thought this was gonna be like that. No, bro actually went out like this. Lizard League pussy as fuck. Fuck for that nigga, I'm not even gonna lie. Me personally, I'm gonna get back up from that shit and roundhouse kick this nigga in the next week. It's just a flesh wound for real though. I nigga gonna walk it off, I'm coping. I remember hearing about a case where a nigga survived a bullet wound to the head cause he had locks. Now, I don't say this a lot cause I don't really believe it, but maybe in this one instance, maybe a white man should have had locks, I'm just saying. I don't know if Rex is white, but I'm gonna kinda consume. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna say like maybe, maybe he's Hispanic or something, so I round it up. Back to the real heroes in space. Everybody's still guarding rude after Eve passed out and Rudy built the doohickey while Shapesmith is protecting him. He says that somebody has to get near the host body and Mortal's ready to go in. But this nigga Mark bum rushes the shit out of him and says, I kid you not, you're washed up, old man. My trip better, my clothes fit better, my hoes better, my tattoos better, I'm stronger than you, my bitch thicker than yours, my gun's bigger than yours, nigga, my gun's bigger than yours. I got it from here. And Immortal folds. This nigga folds to a teenager who just got his powers a year ago. This nigga has been 
been alive since the Stone Age. He was Abraham Lincoln. And he folded like this to a college student? This nigga a bitch. More of a bitch than the Lizard League. I'm not gonna lie. So he gives Invincible support towards the host body. They get to the host body, hit the butt, get the astronaut back. But the squid shits took over Eve and Rudy. They tired as fuck though. So what the squid is really gonna do for real? Run and try to regroup. Can't do that though. Invincible and Immortal swoop them niggas up. Cure them. Dip out. Back to the Lizard League. And leader talking his shit like, yeah, I watched the Guardian. That was light work, no reaction. And this nigga Rex gets up. He don't need no reboot card. He is just him. Nigga took a gunshot to the head. Told this nigga, shut the fuck up and run to one's pussy. We ain't done yet. Nigga got his hand bit off, stomach ripped open, shot in the head, and he ain't done yet. Slaps the gun out this nigga's hand. Starts decking this nigga with nothing but straight hand and willpower. Stabbing him in the face with his broken hand. It's about the hardest shit I've ever fucking seen, nigga. Ever. Backup pulls up while Rex is still decking this nigga in the shit and asks Rex, is he okay? And bloodied up, wounded, gunshot to the head, stomach ripped open, only one arm. He looks back and says the coldest line in this series to this day. He says, yeah, me, I'm fine. You know me, man, I'm pretty much invincible. With the time, <laughs> this is my ghost. He deserves the name Invincible more than that nigga Invincible does. In the show called Invincible, how is you not invincible and somebody else is invincible, but they not called invincible in the show where you have, y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Like, y'all listening, but y'all not really listening, dog. So he passes out and we see Shrinking Ray is a alive somehow too like barely but hey she's still here so the gang are going to the ship and the martians are like hey leave that martian nigga behind we gotta kill him for causing all this and mark is like you know what i get it them niggas skedaddle away ships following them shooting at them and chasing them what do they do they send mark to go hit an omni man out there bro is destroying ships just by flying through them and shit shit was cold as fuck i'm not gonna lie this nigga was doing it so casually too like he flew up stopped in the air moved down the y axis and just destroyed one of the shits bro was cold and eve pulled up on him gave him the meanest hug ever it was kind of awkward not gonna lie but you see what she trying you know what i'm saying all right shit so we get back to earth see that everyone's kind of okay i guess besides you know duplicate she's dead as hell we see immortal having a service for kate and bro is sad about kate dying as he should be they were dating nigga she a little ass girl compared to you but this is the only case where i will say love is love i guess all that other shit no nigga that is right you can't fuck that lad, dog. So we see that Mark and Amber are trying to reconnect, but shit ain't really working because Mark too busy being invincible. We need to slide that title to Rex. He is invincible as fuck. I'm going to say it again. And Rick is back. Y'all remember Rick? Y'all care about the Rick story? No, me neither. So Mark visits Rex and they have a little bro talk. Rex talking about how his life flashed before his eyes when he took that gun to the head like a real G. That he's realized that he's been a dick to every girl he's been with and that they deserve better. I was really resonating with bro right there. I'm not going to lie to you. And Rex says, why does being a hero and saving people hurt the people you love the most? This nigga Rex over here is speaking like Shakespeare after that bullet to the head. I think I might need to take one, bro. And he sees that this nigga Mark looking down as fuck. So he asks him about his love life. Mark tells him what's going on between him and Amber. So Mark leaves, bumps into Eve, who is here to visit Rex. And he tells her that Mark and Amber aren't doing so good. You can practically see the lights flickering on in her head that she got a plan. She just need the execution. Debbie trying to find a nanny for Oliver it ain't going so well until like the perfect nanny comes in offers her service and pretty much gets the job right away you know but who, who really cares about this part man Cecil pulls up on Eve and is like yo the team is washed right now we need you and Eve is like nah I don't do rules I don't do teams I just do myself I got the rose toy in the back but if you need help you clearly got my address and he's like all right you'll come around eventually but handle your guest and we see that Amber pulled up on Eve to talk about relationship shit Mark goes to art to talk about relationship too and i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not gonna, i'm not gonna bore y'all with this right art and eve tell mark and amber respectively go talk to your partner about this shit instead of talking to me there's a bunch of other shit too of course amber feels alone and mark feels like he's doing to amber what his dad did to him and his mom but moral of the story is go talk to your partner about that shit if you really love them but eve says this little line right here and you know she just said it because she tried to get with mark right like peep this line out when bad things happen Mark has to drop everything and go. Yeah, everything. 
Including you. Like, why she paused like that, bro? This is dead ass Eve right now. She is pulling Kobe numbers with this instigating, dog. This might be my go. So Art tells Mark, oh yeah, your dad wrote books all the time, man. And here's some of them. I told him they were fire. I ain't read these bum ass books. Mark reads them and finds out about a nigga with an infinity gun. That must be me and Cod Zombies when I get the ray gun, nigga. I feel unstoppable. If you use the ray gun Mark II and said it was better than the regular one, you're trash. I'm not going to lie to you. Why would you even say something like that? I might have just started a war in the comments. I don't care. He finds out about a planet with monsters strong enough to beat even Viltrumites, and it's all W info, and there are hella books just like this one. So we cut to Alan pulling up an immortal trying to kill him because he thinks it's Omni Man. Mark stops them from fighting, obviously, because Alan is the homie, and he tells Immortal to go home. And bro, look at this goofy ass frame. Why is the, this thing is why does he look like this right here? So Mark goes to talk to Alan. Meanwhile, we see Amber at a party and I don't have a good feeling about this. He was about to text Mark, I miss you, but she deleted the text. Meanwhile, we see Max Prestige brown skin at the party, bro. I don't have a good feeling about this. Nothing good is about to happen. I just know it. Back to Alan and Mark. Alan tells Mark that his boss is a Viltramite. I need Mark to come to space to help stop the Viltramites. And Mark is like, bro, no, base messed up my life so much. I leave for two months. Me and my girl are drifting apart. Come back with a purple alien kid, dump it on my mom. And now you want me to go back to space? No, but I got these books my dad gave me that might tell you about the Viltramite's weakness or something. And Alan's like, bet, I'ma scan these, no librarian. Head home, and Mark is like, hey, when the time comes to wreck, call me up, I'ma pull up for it. And Alan is like, bet, I'ma try to see what they doing with your dad if that nigga even still alive. Then we see what's up with Nolan, the Viltramites is like, hey bro, going back up, you was the goat back in the day, we need niggas like you. But Noli too busy mewing, bro ain't saying a word, he don't wanna break that streak. Even when choked out, he is straight faced as fuck on the rail, he's sick as fuck and denting the ship with a little fist slamming. He doing all that with one little punch? Bro, I'd start bashing the walls out until I'm free. He ain't restricted or nothing, but that don't really matter. We see the nigga from Mars in his house. He throws up a little alien shit that attaches to him. I really hope we can wrap this shit up real quick too, cause like, I don't care about an alien invasion story, bro. Like Cecil keeps tabs on Debbie. Can he also have a tab on this nigga and have the invisible army niggas just shoot this nigga come next episode? I'm not trying to go on with this plot anymore, bro. And then we see this nigga Levy getting his suit and tie on on his all for one ship and he heads back to earth after going through a few portals Do you need to go through all these portals though like is there a number he got to hit before he can get an exact location like there ain't no gps on his shit no like alexa no, no siri no okay just felt a little extra is all i'm saying also this nigga didn't pay for his suit that's real evil if you ask me because them custom made suits be expensive as fuck like hella bread and 17 cents type expensive but yeah man that's it for this like subscribe and if you're trying to see what i said about the first half of episode five go check out that boy i'm kevin's video